Okay, welcome to my messy office. I have an office plant, his name is Benny. I got him when he was a teeny tiny little office plant and he decided he didn't want to be a tiny office plant and now he occupies half of my desk and I'm not quite sure what to do about him. I promised you a saddle pad collection video um, and it's quite requested. Um, <laughs> ages ago and or months ago at least i asked you what kind of videos you wanted if i decided to start making some youtube videos and saddle pad collection was probably like half of the requests and i get why because i have quite weird saddle pads and people are really curious about them so I decided to show you my tiny little saddle pad collection and hopefully by the end of this I have a video I can show you. So if you're watching this, success! I made something. I'll start with what I call a saddle pad that a lot of people are incredibly confused about. And just to start it off I will link in the description down below a paper, a research paper they did and I, on the top of my head, I think they compared reindeer, sheepskin, and gel pads. I'm not quite sure. I'll link it to you. Uh, and they were like, okay, uh, what pad is the most beneficial in terms of distributing weight, transporting heat away from the horse, uh, reducing pressure points? And they figured out in the study that, hey, reindeer is actually the best. So naturally, I have a reindeer saddle pad. It's, in all honesty, just a reindeer pelt. You can get them probably everywhere in Norway. I have no idea where you can get them in your country, I'm sorry. Uh, if you try to Google reindeer saddle pad, maybe you'll find some resources. I have it fur down, and as you can see in the video, I often fold it over so that the fur shows, because it looks cool. I usually have tail to tail, because people also ask that question. I don't think that matters as much, but it's just a way for me to put it on consistently. What you really need to watch out for if you just purchased one is that the tanning process can make the skin quite stiff. And when you put a saddle on, the leather, I guess, the leather skin side of the pelt can buckle and fold. So you really, really need to make sure that the skin isn't stiff because it might be and you might have creating pressure points. I mean, I've used it for three years now probably and it still looks cool. It sheds like most reindeer belts do, but it looks super cool. Second saddle pad is a more standard saddle pad as you obviously can see. It's a black dressage saddle pad from Horse, I think, Horse Equestrian. I use it a lot when I want to look more normal or when I just want to be like all black tack because I think that's cool, but it's not really anything special to say about this saddle pad, so there you go. Third saddle pad is from Hux Equestrian. Again, simple, classic dressage saddle pad. Hux says that this saddle pad is light gray. It's not, it's beige. Um, and my mom actually thinks it's quite purple or pinkish. Sadly, my saddle got really drenched one day as we were riding out in the rain, and you can kind of see that it's stained like the side of it. But doesn't matter, saddle covers it anyway. And onto the absolutely weird saddle pads. First one of the three weird ones is a, it's navy blue, but it's quite bright. So, you know, I actually call it more of a royal blue. It has like this print on it and they have like stitched it with like a contrast stitch in like a bright red color. This is a so-called medieval saddle pad. Um, I usually call, refer to it more of a fantasy thing because Medieval, I mean, it's not historically accurate medieval as far as I'm concerned. I don't even care about it. It's super pretty. It has kind of this edge to it down below. There's kind of this, I don't know what you would call it. It has this nice little edge to it and it looks really pretty. This blue one is the general purpose version. So it's a bit shorter than my other two, but it fits all my dressage saddles anyway. So I don't care, looks cool. Then we have the beige dressage medieval saddle pad. I think like technical terms it's a sand color 
from the manufacturer. It's longer because it is the dressage version and it still has those really pretty edges. The pattern is quite different. It's got like these horses on them and it's printed with like a dark brown and white and it's got this white contrast stitch on it. It's super pretty and I think this one is probably seven years old. Last saddle pad is a navy version that I just purchased secondhand because they don't make these anymore. It's a darker navy color with like turquoise and white printing and this contrast orange stitch and it's so pretty. If you wonder where these medieval saddle pads come from, they can be purchased or should be purchased once at a time uh, from the store uh, shop named Baroque Tack Store. I'll link them in the description down below but they don't make these anymore so what they have left is it. Usually for the dressage versions you have to look secondhand for them and people are really holding on to them because they're quite rare and they're quite pretty and people don't want to fight with them obviously. But yeah that's my little saddle pad collection. It's six saddle pads. I mean I wouldn't mind more but that's all I need.